that might be it. That's it. Finally, got my hands on the Autoflex shaft. I've got the SF505X driver shaft today. I'm excited to see if I can hit some of my furthest drives I have ever hit. I'm Thomas Campbell. I am in the tour van today at the Minnetonka location, and I'm excited to test this shaft out compared to another stiff golf shaft with the TaylorMade Sim 2 driver. For today's test, I'm going to be trying to hit as many bombs as I can today. I've got the Kurokargi 60X golf shaft, and I've also got the Autoflex golf shaft, and we're going to be comparing the differences between the two golf shafts. I do expect with the Autoflex golf shaft weighing 54 grams, it's much lighter, that I should be able to pick up a little bit more club speed. So more club speed should equal more distance. If I'm able to get more club speed, more distance, I might hit some of the best drives I've ever hit in my life. Let's set a target. I've got the Kurokagi 60X golf shaft, got the Sim 2 8 degree head. Let's see how these golf shafts compare. Okay, so swing five there, I got my club speed over 115 miles an hour with the Kurokargi 60X shaft. I'm excited to see now if I'm able to generate more club speed with the Autoflex shaft. Oh boy, 117. Three forty one point seven. That might actually be the furthest driver of a hit. Not even on the six degree yet. Yeah. Still coming in at a landing angle of forty two degrees. Oh boy, that was good. Okay, so let's talk numbers with the Autoflex shaft versus the Kurokargi 60X. Before I do that, I just want to touch on the feel. So the Kurokargi shaft definitely felt very, very stable. It's a lot stiffer, while the Autoflex shaft is definitely a little bit more whippy. But it's not terrible at impact. It still felt like I had a hard time turning the club face over with the lighter, more whippy golf shaft. Um, it wasn't perfect as we kind of take a look on the look on the dispersion pattern. I had pretty similar, uh, pretty similar dispersion really with both golf shafts. I had four left out to the right and then we had one that I kind of pulled over there to the left. So this would be a good comparison. You will notice that I picked up three miles an hour of club speed. So with the Kurokargi 60X, my club speed was about 113 and a half miles an hour, while the Autoflex SF 505X was 116.5 on average. I had one that I did get to 117, and I also had one shot in there that I did hit over 340 yards as well. So that's really kind of important to bring up. Really surprising, the spin rate. Spin rate is almost identical with both of the two golf shafts. Uh, launch angle is a little bit lower with the Autoflex. I think that's partially because I had that one that was a little low left that I missed when comparing the numbers. But even still, hitting the ball 330 yards plus with both golf shafts, I'm still leaving a little bit on the table. So we were testing with the Sim 2 8 degree head. I'm going to stick with this club head, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the loft to 6 degrees. You will notice that my attack angle has been hovering around about 6 to 8 degrees up. Because I hit off the ball so much when I swing fast, the ball goes very, very high. So the ball was almost coming into the green like a 7 iron, so it's over 40 degrees with the landing angle and the height 130 to 140 feet in the air. If we can bring that down and get a little bit better optimal window, I might just hit it even further. So I'm going to lower the loft with the Sim 2, with the Autoflex golf shaft, and I'm going to hit quite a few drives now and see if I can hit the furthest drive of my life. Not a bad start at all. Three forty four. Might be it. 
it. That's it. No! Ugh. One yard. Well, unfortunately, I have to wait another week or two to reach my goal of 350 yards or 120 mile an hour club speed. 349, I mean, come on, that's just, that's just not fair right now. That's, that's I, I thought I had it today, I thought I had it. So let's check out the numbers on that shot right there. I mean, 323.7 going 349. One thing that's really kind of impressive with this golf shaft is, yeah, it's, it's light. Definitely is you're able to generate a little bit more club speed. My average club speed, now we hit like 10 or 11 drives here. My average club speed was 117.8 miles an hour. We got to 119.7. Can't believe it, I, th I thought I had it today, but it's gonna have to be another time there as well. So really kind of interesting. So we went down to six degrees of loft. We noticed my attack angle, yeah, it's fairly far up. On average, my attack angle was eight degrees up. So that's why I was still launching the ball very, very high. So I was still launching it at 15 degrees. And on average, I was still flying at 137 feet in the air. So if I could bring that down just a little bit more, that's probably more swing technique. I'm going to have to figure out a way to swing faster, but not hit up on the ball quite as much because that's getting a little bit too far up there. You really can't get less than six degree driver, unfortunately, because if I could, it's just going to, especially the miss hits are definitely going to go pretty far offline. So speaking on, the, on those miss hits, it's important to note when you do swing faster, it is much harder to get that club face to be square at impact. And I definitely had a hard time. When I lower the loft on the Sim 2 driver from eight to six, what I'm actually doing is I'm opening that club face about four degrees. So you will notice the trend of leaving a lot of shots over there to the right side here today. Um, keep in mind, you've got to make sure you hit the fairway. So it's not always just about bombing and gouging the ball as far as you can because depending on the golf course you're playing, you'll get punished. If you've got tight fairways, if you've got out, out of bounds left and right, there's no advantage to trying to hit the ball as far as you possibly can. So very important to remember that because accuracy is also very, very important. So you can also see, if you look at the far right here, you can see the average feeder curve was about in the 40s to the right. So I had a lot of left to right curve on the ball because I was having a hard time to, getting that, to get that club face nice and square at impact. And I think a lot of it is to do with the lighter golf shaft. Because I have a very, very quick tempo, I've always had a hard time of getting that club face to square up because I've really started very, very quick and that club face at impact is naturally gonna feel like it's open for me at impact. And that's why my miss was so far to the right. Um, so I've got to work on my technique if I'm going to be swinging this fast as I keep going through super speed training or whatever over speed training that I am using here too. But impressive, deflated, but I approve of this golf shaft for those golfers that are looking for extra help with regards to club speed. There's no doubt with it being lighter that the ball will go further if you get that club face nice and square. But end of the day, remember, ball speed is more important. So keep in mind, if you're swinging faster, it does make it harder to hit in the middle of the club face. So it's really important to make sure when you're working with your club fitter at second swing, to make sure you find the best club head and golf shaft combination, whether that be an extremely light, extremely long golf shaft, or just a really solid golf shaft that fits your swing tendencies. It's important to make sure that you test them out and figure out which golf shaft works best for you. I really hope you enjoy this content. Subscribe to our channel if you can. Give us a comment and like if you can as well. Let's see you on the next video.